kept his dick wet with his same old safe bed. Me and my head high and my tears dry. Get on without my guy. You and back to what you knew. So far removed from all that we went through. You still don't know. No clue. <laughs> a trouble track. My odds are stacked. I'll go back to black. No. Mm-mm. We only said goodbye with words. <laughs> oh I died a hundred times. You go back to her and I go back. No, still nothing. Nothing. What is happening? That was Amy Winehouse. Back to black. Oh, young Amy. Amy Jade. Amy Jade. Is that her middle name? It is. And she is, I think her birthday is either the same day as mine or the day before. Now, you know, I should have known that I'm just so far removed. I have not. (laughs) From all that you've been through? No, I've just not gone through. I've not reached back to Amy in quite some time. Oops. Um, (laughs) That's my spoon and my teacup. (laughs) Because it's my teacup. When I'm not in the sunken place, but my uterus is. (laughs) I'm drinking tea too, but my uterus is fine today. My eater is it's a full swag surf Aww. going on. I, all the niggas are just being raucous and just unruly. <laughs> because when a swag surf comes on. Oh my God. You would think that. <laughs> we swag surfed in church on Sunday. Did yeah. you? Oh my God. That sounds like my kind of carry it on. Yes. And my friend texted me and was like, did y'all just swag surf? I was like, kind of did. Did. Yes, we did. It was amazing. We served the Lord. You know, the Lord made the waves and why can't we just get in on letting the waves praise him? Everything. I'm just saying. I don't you know, know what the problem I don't, I don't see the problem. I don't see a problem at all. What kind but of yes. tea are you drinking? I am drinking a lemon hibiscus Ooh. Uh, blend. I got her from um, Marshalls. You know, all of the secret finds in the Marshalls novelty section. Lit. You can get your life in there, honey. Olive oils and salt. They got all of the best, like, grapeseed avocado oil for the low, low, low. Yep. Um, like, yeah. all the bougie stuff that's supposed to be, like, in the specialty stores. Marshall's got the goods as does Always. home goods as well. But yes, I totally found this. It was probably like $2 or something, this special mm. blend of white women's teas. So I was like, <laughs> let's get it. Let's go. It's popping. I'm drinking a TJ's Moroccan mint. Oh, we love TJ's. I've not been to TJ's in too long. I went today um, and spent far too much money. I just I walked out with two two baskets full of bags. Unbelievable. Well, I had to get you know I had to get us together because I've been gone. So our in, our refrigerator was bare. Our freezer needed some loving. You know what I'm saying? You know how a black mother has to stock up on meat. <laughs> so I had to go stock up on meat and put it in the freezer. You know how it rolls. Did you so, get good snacks? I I feel like Trader Joe's snacks. Trader Joe's is like the snack mecca of the world. Honestly, they are they are actually they don't have part any of hood the rat snacks. Yeah, no, they, they don't. They don't have any hood rat snacks if that's your speciality. But you can find delicious snacks in the Trader Joe's. That is the only vanilla wafer that I will make a banana pudding with outside of our good classic vanilla, Nabisco. Vanilla, 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 vanilla. Trader Joe's vanilla wafers. I'm sorry, y'all. They take the cake. You can see the bits mm-hmm. of vanilla bean in the cookie they are delicious and everybody i put them on have i put on to them it's like yo nigga these changed my life i don't banana pudding however um <sighs> i mean i i can respect a good nilla, a good nilla wafer now are they called nilla wafers in trader joe's or are they called vanilla wafers you know i think 
they're called vanilla bean nilla wafers but i need to look at the packaging again to be you know what we're just going to use our good sis google like i don't even know why i'm doing all of that google Trader. she's my sister trader joe's vanilla wafer cookies Let's see what the packaging says i feel like it says ultimate vanilla wafers so i mean i'm sure that they're amazing um, they are a butter cookie with flecks of Madagascar vanilla beans. Trader Joe's would have Madagascar vanilla beans in the vanilla way and flex. They'd have flex. Oh, but I gosh. love, I live for Trader Joe's. I know a lot of people go there and they get overwhelmed and they tell me like, "Yo, nigga, I don't have the same experience you have." I'm like, "That's because you don't take your time. You don't take your time. Yeah, you don't just it's go gyms. to Trader Joe's when you got like you got to make a quick run to the store. You've got to no, take nigga, your time." No to explore and really let the things speak to you and call out to you. You have to be willing to take risks and try new things. Go to the frozen section, get your life. I don't even believe in frozen food. Go to the frozen section, get your life. Get your life on the chip aisle. They have every, I mean, every kettle and popcorn. And not and just kettle. potato chips, right? No. You can get a plantain no. chip in there. You can, that is out of this yes, world. Two kinds. Bruh. Two kinds. You can get the, two the sweet plantain chip. The sweet with the in or, the yellow bag. Or you can get the <laughs> roasted in the purple and clear bag. Let me tell you something. And the roasted, the roasted ones will get you in trouble because you will eat the entire bag. As well as the sweet plantain, ah. especially if you all dip it in the mango habanero salsa. But the plantain ones will really Ooh. get you set up because they are 99 cents. <laughs> Delicious. So good. <laughs> Delicious. Um, There's like 75 versions of tortilla chips. There's quinoa and black bean. There's sweet potato There's tortilla blue chips. blue corn. There's black bean. Yellow yes. corn. Yes. Your sna- get your snack life together. Yeah, uh, We could really have a whole episode. We could have on an this. episode We're about gonna... <laughs> Trader Joe's. Navigating the Trader Joe's and why... Everybody ought to do it because that's real life adulting. But we have not even greeted the people yet. Praise the Lord. We haven't. Praise the Lord. Oh, my word. You see how we get caught up in the spiral of snacking? Mm, Because what is life without snacks, huh? Miserable. Man, man. I'm just so grateful that the Lord gave them to us. But how are you doing today, sis? So I am um, getting over a sick. A sick. So a sick. (laughs) Yeah, I my body sick. So <laughs> um I'm getting over that. So you guys will hear some residual and I'm going to do my best to be as polite as possible because I don't want any emails mm-hmm. about any foreign noises or anything else. So I'm doing the best that I can, but I am here. I have some wonderful business opportunities coming up. Fantastic. That I have that I've prayed for for a while. So I can't complain. How are you? I'm yet holding on. Um, my uterus is trying to take me out. I think. Hold it on. Sorry, I, I love Jeffrey Osborne. Oh my god, <laughs> you're so old. <laughs> but um, yeah, my uterus is trying to decease me. <laughs> Just trying to oh. off me. No more key. Well, if but, you want um, me to fight her, I got you. I just want her to calm down. Pipe down, sis. Just take it easy. I thought we was in this together. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing okay. Lots of deadlines this week. I'm literally up mm. to my eyelashes in things to do, but we're mm. going to get it done. Um, so we're just moving on, moving forward. Welcome back to uh, Getting Grown with Jaden Kia. We are two black women who work really hard and we come here to talk about how sleepy we are <laughs> once a week. And we share that with you because yeah. we care. Um, and we know that you're tired as well and that you can relate. Why? Because we talk about adulting here, all things adulting, the good, the bad, the ugly, the twists, the turns, the tests, the trials, the triumphs, and the taxes of being an adult in the year of our Lord, 2018. Amen. Yeah, man. So let's jump on in. We got thing, we got uh, things to talk Ooh. about today. So let's just get into some basura. Basura, basura, ha, 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 cha, cha, cha. cha, cha, cha. It is hot today and it is full again. Um, did you see the Khalees interview? You know, I did. I I took my time. And I wanted to watch the whole thing. Um, Same. And I, Same. I absolutely did watch it. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Same. Got a lot of great perspective. 
um, about who Khalees is and what she's been dealing with and going through. Very transparent, very honest. Um, so yeah, what were your thoughts? I felt the same way. I thought it was very refreshing because um, she didn't come. She didn't. She didn't present. She didn't present her relationship with Nas, or should I say, she didn't. She didn't try to out him like as this terrible person that she hated. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Totally. She wasn't. She wasn't shitting on him, but she was addressing necessary issues that needed to be addressed. And I think that I appreciated the balance in that. She brought out his good points, but she was also uh refreshingly honest about a lot of the difficulties that she experiences with him. And honestly, I I I can see it. Yeah, I mean it was you know totally saying? not anything far fetched. And I left no. left a watching I mean I I finished the interview saying I don't feel like Khalees had any reason to lie about anything that she said. I felt like she was so transparent, so genuine, such that she aired herself out just like she aired him out. So it mm-hmm. wasn't, it, it wasn't like she was, you know, just digging into him or his character, but she talked very, very plainly about real issues and struggles that, you know, they've had in their relationship that he's had personally and that she's had personally in just a really mm-hmm. respectful way. So, I mean, I thought, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was spot on. It also gave me, I don't know, it made me think twice. Maybe I'm digging or reaching. I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but it makes me think and look at Nikki and her recent behavior differently. Because mm. I just wonder, you know, if, if she she's been going some through some things. some things, you know. And I mean, I'm not accusing. I'm just, like I said, I don't have any. This is all speculation. Right, it's just thoughts. But it's just right. thoughts. But, you know, it just kind of make me feel like, you know, Huh. Like, like, I wonder if, you know, some of the things, uncharacteristic things or the weird things, quirky things about Nikki's most recent behavior may be some evidence of some other things at play um, in her life and situation. So, yeah, that makes that makes a little bit of sense. But, you know, you know I'm gonna, I don't really know when it comes to <laughs> um but no, I really, I thoroughly enjoyed the interview. I really did. Um, it gave me a whole new perspective. I didn't even, and I never like trash talk Khalees or I, I never just really even thought yeah, about it. Should I say. Totally. Um, but I, it, it was refreshing to watch. And then on top of that, obviously I had a personal connection with the whole chef thing because I follow Khalees mm-hmm. and her food looks amazing. Like it looks delicious. Yes, it is. Um, and she takes it so seriously that I just, I, I love it. Um, so yeah, I really, I really thought it was a really, really good interview. I really did. I thought she did a wonderful job with it. Um, and I love the fact that she's setting up the fund for moms who can't afford to go through all of the legal, you know, like the litigation and all of yep. the, you know, hearings and depositions and that that come with divorces and custody battles. And you know, you can really tell that that was something that she was really passionate about, and I had a lot of respect for that. Absolutely. So, yeah, if you guys have not uh, seen the Khalees interview, it is long. It is over an hour. But it's worth it. But if you it's have, better than some, it's, it's better it. than loving hip hop, watching Rashida tape up her own house. Uh, did you see that? I did. I said, I wish I, I would get on my hands and knees and draw tapes. I mean, use tapes, tapes, use tape to like. <laughs> like cut my rooms in half for this nigga. I wish I would spend time for a nigga who looks like an elbow. I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. I'm not an elbow. He, he do look like a joint, don't he? <laughs> he does. XD says he looks, he looks like, like a knee. I said he, he looks, looks like, like an elbow. Hinge. Then he like a hinge. <laughs> 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 He's so irritating. Oh, I literally cannot stand Kirk Frost. He is so wildly. He annoying. might be the most useless man ever to walk the face of this planet. I mean, what ever. what purpose does he serve? I wonder. I mean, he, oh god, is he just? I'll put him in the top ten useless oh niggas uh, category. Just, I really will. I, I'm sure there are plenty more who deserve to be there, but he is for sure uh, cemented in place. And useless nigga. Oh my god! Just draining the life force 
from me. I can't even. I even. Mm-mm-mm. I slowed down on comment. I don't. You know, I don't comment on the shade room stuff no more. But Why? I, um, what happened? I just, I, don't, I, I just, I'm too busy. Um, but I, you know, I, I look at it. I look at it, and then wow. I did have one post where they posted Rashida, an old picture of Rashida and Kirk, like many moons ago. And I responded on that when I couldn't help myself. I was like, I only like this picture for Rashida because <laughs> I really don't like Kirk that much. I really <laughs> have never commented on the shade room stuff or get into the comments because you, it, that is a sunken place. You will get dropped down <laughs> low and it'll get your ego on. You'll be down there for days. You'll be down there for days. For years. I can't. Years. I just can't afford, I can't afford the risk of time. There are some, uh, it, it's the comment section. It could be the best and the worst place ever. You find some of the funniest comments from people, but then you also have the derelict of society where I'm like, who raised you? Oh. But anyway, that's another conversation. Um, speaking of derelicts of society, Black China is having a child with a child. No, Real. she's pregnant? Pregnant. Shut your mouth. Is she pregnant? By that, by that baby boy. Is she really? She is pregnant, sis, with third child. Angela. With a child. She is with child by a child. What that is, is you child. doing, sis? I don't care if he's 18 he's years only, old. So I it is confirmed that he is care. actually 18 years old. Yeah, he's. He, I believe he's legal, My yes. God, today. But that means nothing. What? I spoke to some 18 year olds at career day not too long ago. <laughs> like, I don't... How old is, is Black China? Let's look it up. Angela. Uh, what's I her name? Care. What's her last name? Black China. She's 29. Her... Allegedly. Oh, her birthday. Her, her birth. She'll be 30 this year on May mm. the 11th. Mm. That is awful. Dear Jesus, I love you. I cannot believe that. Yeah. Yeah. She's, um... King yeah. Dream. What's she gonna name this one? Lego? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. We got King. We got oh, Dream. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. What, I don't know. She gonna name this baby Fisher Price or something. What the devil? Something immature because she is having is a, child he, with a child. Oh my god, I am stunned. I, I mean, woof, this is just a lot for me because then this explains things. Because earlier today, I saw a tweet on my timeline and I just chuckled at it and kept on scrolling because I didn't have time to do any further investigation. But somebody was like, "Y'all talk about mute R. Kelly. Why hasn't anybody raised any charges against Black China?" <laughs> That's not. I, mean, I was just like, what? Like This young man threw money in the toilet, so I can only assume that he's not quite right. Something. When I saw that, I, I... I mean, I just... Visions of my student loan balance just, just dashed across my eyeballs. And this man, as, as this child, put actual money into the toilet. Actual money. And it looked like quite a bit. Enough what does he do? Like, what does he do? He's allegedly a rapper. Where? I, th- you are asking way too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Black China. Oh my God. This is this is on this is on. This is actually like when you Google Black China, this tweet comes up. Black China is high key a predator. <laughs> Hi, he, high key predator. What are you doing right Pregnant. now? You are doing the Pregnant most. Pregnant by an eighteen no year old reason. boy. Like, there's nothing redeeming about that. There's nothing. Like, you don't. You can't feel that. What is That's he gonna troubling. do? That's troubling. I don't know. I don't know. So you about to have four kids? That's wild. Four. Man. That's wild oh, and gross. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> her oldest her oldest son is 18 my oldest son and then this is my second son king and this is my daughter dream and then this is my baby uh whatever the name of the baby i don't Child. i don't want to call it i don't i had a thought but i'm not gonna say it it was ugly um, Dear God. well okay 
Speaking of mute, R. Kelly, Mm -hmm. uh, it is now a thing. The Root put out an article, um, and there is a petition going on to mute R. Kelly. Well, that's happening. Everyone's talking about it. Shonda Rhimes tweeted it. Uh, Melina Matukas, she 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 tweeted like, I'm just trying the to figure out people, what took so the times that long. people. Um, oh uh, yeah, they're, them too. they're also releasing statements. Um, so yeah, I don't know what took so long. I do not. I do not. I do not know what took so long. The fact that there is a R. Kelly McDonald's Listen, I in said Chicago. That when I was in Chicago. Is, yes, like the fact that that exists. The fact that people call it that, like, it why like has this not statement. been a thing? So like, it's like a cultural artifact. It's it's the part. Like, right. it's known throughout Chicago and surrounding areas as gourmet McDonald's. Like, passively, they'll be like, "Oh, that's the." Uh, not McDonald's. even passively. I'm telling you, like, mm-hmm. I can talk to people who are from like Minneapolis and mention gourmet McDonald. I mean, gourmet R. Kelly McDonald's. I say <laughs> gourmet McDonald's because there was a McDonald's. Off of Exit 67, right by UConn, and me and my fat ass friends would call it Gourmet McDonald's because the food there was always amazing. But <laughs> and they were open 24 <laughs> hours, and we would be up just fat and breathing, like, "Oh, bitch, you want to go Gourmet McDonald's at three o'clock in the morning?" Yes, that sounds man, like so good. Good times were had. Howsoever, mm-hmm. that's not what we were talking about. I'm saying that I have spoken <laughs> to people who live in, you know, Wisconsin or who live in Michigan, and they know that there is a McDonald's in Chicago that is known as uh, R. Kelly McDonald's. I almost did it again. Jesus Christ. I must be hungry. That is awful. But um, Yeah, you're hungry. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what took so long. I fully, I am, I fully endorse this uh, bonfire <laughs> that is happening. Uh, <laughs> R. Kelly's career is like a bonfire. I brought my marshmallows to toast. I am ready. Yeah. Toast s'mores. Front and center. Let's I've been do it. front and center. Let's do it. I've been waiting. Like when you go to a festival and you wait, and you like you gotta wait for like hours for the for like a Beyonce, but you gotta <laughs> go there like four hours ahead of time and just sit in a lonely ass field. That's me. That's been me for this R. I, I've been at the front of this R. Kelly. Get rid of this nigga campaign. I told you. He's got it's to. It's been go. challenging because I still, you know, there's a, a special place in my heart for the song "Happy People," but I have got to let that die. It's over. I, 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 I so can't. It is. Can't do it. It's so I can't. Bad. He's dead. Mourn him. Um. So we talked a little bit last week about how Kanye West mm. died. Um. Oh, and I think he's just really on a campaign. But, so I ran across uh, he's still something tweeting? with lyrics. He's still tweeting, but I I believe he released a I believe there's a song called Scoopy Dee Poop. Oh, Savior. I feel like I've heard people I feel like I've seen people listening to it, like reaction videos on Insta Insta stories and Snapchat, but I've not heard it myself. I was hoping that somebody was playing and like did some sort of I match thought up. it was a joke. I haven't not heard it either, but as I continue to read, I think this is an actual thing. Like he's truly out of his mind. Yeah, man. It's not even like a joke anymore. Like, I mean, it was never really no. a joke to begin with, but it's like sad. Like, it, it's not a, yeah, I don't know. Kanye gone. John Legend talked some sense into him. They took I, Where is John ja Rule? Sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with it. I'm done with you. All right. I couldn't. <laughs> Okay, just two more things. Um, Bill Cosby is going to jail mm, 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 mm. and is on house arrest until formal sentencing, which should be in about 75 days. Listen, so, let me just say um, this. Has anybody checked on Miss Camille? That's all I care about. I hope so. Is she all right? I'm worried about her. She has, yeah. she has done her due diligence and it just makes me like, I feel like she's tried to be a supportive wife as best she could given the circumstances. I don't know. I just hate that her legacy and all the work that she's done is now tarnished by this, yep. by this exactly. nonsense. And everybody else, because they have now pulled the Cosby show everywhere. What? So, that so it's sad. I like 
it's an internal struggle. I have a str- It's hard. I can't. I like I'm like, yeah, it's hard. Because I, that's, it's not a show. It's, it, <laughs> right. I can still watch the Cosby show, but like I can't listen to R. Kelly music. I know that not that I'm saying in any way, shape, form or fashion that I advocate for this. I think that Bill Cosby is getting his his due justice at this point. He um, he 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 committed some disgusting, gross cool. acts and you must pay the price for that. It doesn't matter who you are. You must pay the price for that. Those those were heinous acts. You drugged mm-hmm. women and mm-hmm. raped mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Disgusting. Mm-hmm. So I don't care who you are, but be, I think because of the rest of the cast, I'm like, they should not suffer. You know what I'm saying? Why does Felicia Rashad and Malcolm Jamal Warner and, 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 and Lisa Bonet and Meg, AKA Vanessa, like, why do they all have to, why do they all have to suffer because of his disgusting acts? So that makes me sad. I don't know. And I think too, because it is, it's a show. So you have so many actors who have, you know, crazy ass backgrounds and it's like, all right, well, we're able to watch this because this is a character that they're playing. I think that's why I'm able to separate Cosby show from like R. Kelly, because that's just a gross nigga singing. But this is, I don't know. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Yeah, um, I don't know. But it's it sad. Very it's sad because it's something we've grown up with. And, um, while, like I said, I believe that he is getting everything that he deserves, it's still it's still sad for our you know, like our cultural part of it, like what we grew up with and all of that. Like that's what makes it, it makes it really uh really an internal an internal struggle totally. kind of. Um and then the last thing, there is a Whitney Houston movie dropping. I saw this my friend Steve, shout out to Dr. Mobley, sent me the trailer. Yeah, how do you feel about I it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still coming yeah. to terms with my feelings about it. Same, because I don't trust most of her family, but um, so I don't really know what they're going to But at the same time, like, I love me some Nipsey. Like, I watch Love So her. much. That I, Being Bobby Brown is on YouTube. There's a gift for you if you did not already yeah. know. Um greatest reality show of all time please go get your life if you've never seen it me and my family used to gather together Bobby Bobby and I'm going to see the sisters in Russia Whitney Houston was obsessed with Beyonce which I think is the most wonderful fascinating (laughs) thing in the world and there was like there's a clip floating around on the internet of her looking um through a magazine uh before Jay-Z and Beyonce get married and she's like oh Jigaman, Jigaman. Oh, I just love them. It's just beautiful. I want to come to the wedding. (laughs) And I just, I live for her. So, yeah, I think I'm probably going to go see the movie. Is it going to be in? in I just don't know how I feel about it. I think so. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. But that's it for trash. And enough trash it was. It was enough. Nina. Let's move on quickly and swiftly to the shout out. Oh, yes. Let's do it. My sister's popping right now. Like. We are bike. I am pleased to announce with graduation announcements. Yes, man. All the pomp, all the circumstance. It's walking season. Oh, yes. Gather your regalia. Get it ironed and pressed, honey. No Wrinkles Regalia season 2018 is upon us again. Get out your steamer. Listen, that's it, honey. Fluff up your hats. No creases. No creases in your robes. I will judge you profusely. No runs in your stockings. No, man. No stockings, period. It's me. I was going to say that next, but yeah. (laughs) You know, some people are still going to stocking, so they might as well. No way. All right, let's get started. We got quite a few. You guys were not playing with us. We're going to go all the way back to our December graduates from December 2017, and we're going to keep it pushing from there. I think Jay got the first one. Yes. So I am Nehemiah Miles, and I've just graduated from the Culinary Institute, Lenoder in Houston, Texas, with my Associates in Applied Science of Culinary Arts. Hey! Get it! This was a big deal for me as a student with ADHD and dyslexia. Next step is Texas A&M for food science. Oh, that's a special place in my heart, Nehemiah. That might be our first culinary 
graduation. That just made my heart I sing. So. I think we had some last, Well, maybe not. I don't, I don't remember. I don't but either way. memory is poor. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations. You the best music. Okay. Um, <laughs> the next one. Too succeed, you <laughs> must believe. Sorry. Okay. Perrin. Perrin sent us two emails uh, out of concern <laughs> <laughs> that we were not going to uh, do the graduation announcements for our December graduates, but we told you that we got you, Perrin, so here you go. Praise the Lord, niggas. Folks get so pressed when I say that, but I don't care. LOL. I would love to give a shout out to my sis, to my damn self for being a part of Team Typing Fast and graduating with my bachelor's in multidisciplinary studies with an emphasis in communications and public administrations and minor in sociology and black studies from the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Come on, majors, majors, majors. Indeed. It took me 10 years to fulfill this promise I made to my family and more importantly to myself. Her graduation date was her birthday, December 16th, and she couldn't think of a better gift to give herself, needless to say, um, and the rest of the month will be a lituation. Commencement was, even though commencement is at the end of the year, I see it as a kickoff to my 2018 glow up, glow up. and um, her fiance were planning their wedding schedule for August of this year and looking for their first home. So Perrin is out here out doing here, all kinds of major, 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 major things. So... Um, shout out to you and we're very very happy for you and proud of you go ahead and get that degree sis come on Perrin congratulations to you too on your wedding absolutely <laughs> our next oh our next God. graduate and he he included he included images <laughs> he was not playing lion not king. playing a lion king uh, meme that said uh, not a meme a lion king one that says it is time it is and time Rafiki and S- <laughs> I was about to say Sinbad <laughs> Rafiki and Sinbad <laughs> it is time time so and he said he said who is the lord oh wait who, who is, is like, like the Lord? Lord? Nobody. Nobody. That's right. Praise the Lord, niggas. Greetings and humble salutations. My name is Kevin, and I'd like to give a shout out to myself. On May 5th, I will be receiving my Master of Science degree in Environmental Science, sum, summa cum laude, from Florida A&M University. Fam, to say you? That, Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, go ahead. You better know it. <laughs> <laughs> to say... Uh, That this has been a long journey is an understatement. After my original thesis advisor left the university one year into my project Mm. and my replacement advisor was selected to serve as a university president the very Mm. next year, Mm. I thought Mm. this Mm. thing would Mm. never come. Throughout all the hardships of trying to meet with my committee and get feedback on my work, I found refuge in the relief I needed. Your old school song intros. (laughs) Dr. Kia, your advice on navigating the often tumultuous path to obtaining a graduate degree kept me going um, from going insane and honestly cussing everyone out. No, seriously, I had three emails in draft that I'm so glad I never sent. I enjoy listening to you both. And thanks for the reminder that troubles don't last always. Q Reverend Timothy Wright. Come on. Come on, Kevin. You included these beautiful graduation pictures. Very, very nice. Polished. Congratulations. Your clothes are not too big. I love you, it. You skipped the sentence where he thanked you, Jade. You skipped oh, did I? Thing. Well, you know I can't I, read. I found refuge in fervent <laughs> prayer in this podcast. Y'all had me with the gentle bass riffs from Love TKO and the intro music. Jade, your humor <laughs> uplifted me when I was down and was oh, just the relief I needed. Your old school song intros. You're absolutely right. I did skip it in time. I'm blind. It's fine. It's okay. It's all we right. We're going to be all right. Moving right along. Uh, the next email comes from Melissa, who says, praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow, niggas. Correct. Hello, mm-hmm. Jade and Kia. Let me just say that I love the both of you and you ladies inspire me with every episode. I um, discovered the podcast around October of last year and had to put my book, put both my big sisters in onto it. We have been binge listening ever since. And anywho, um, she wanted to shout out her amazing big, the most amazing big sister in the world. And her name is Drumroll, please. Angel mm-hmm. Marie Kenny. Yes. Yes, beloved, in my Ian LaVoice, I said your full name. Angel will be graduating from the University of Chicago with her master's degree in social work on May the 11th. She managed managed to dedicate her time to her studies, a full-time internship, and work um, part-time job and take care of our oldest sister who is terminally ill. You always Mm -hmm. tend to put others before yourself, but it is time for you to live your best life, Angel. Um, you are the epitome of hashtag black girl magic. And I hope to be half as amazing as you are in the future. 
hashtag team typing fast, hashtag no wrinkled regalia. P.S. That's right. uh, she's typing this on her break at work, so please forgive any grammatical errors, Kia. You are good, sis. No worries. <laughs> Love always. <laughs> Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Shout out to you for shouting out your sister, Angel. And Angel, thank you for being an, um, amazing and taking care of your family and your responsibilities. Many congratulations to you. Please, please, please enjoy your day on May 11th. You deserve yes. You sure do. And you're shady, Melissa, because why can't I be looking out for grammatical nah. errors? Ah. Now I'm about to start calling everybody out oh for the grammatical errors. You're so petty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jade and Kia, my name is Chris Sita, and yeah. I will be receiving my master's in business administration this Saturday, April 28th from Concordia University, Texas. The road has been long and hard, but God has been good. And I am beyond excited to be Chris Sita, C. Green, MBA. Yeah. Thank you both for this platform. I appreciate what you're doing with this podcast and movement that has been created for girls like me to get through this crazy adulting world. I see you and I appreciate you both. Blessings, Chrisida, Chrisida Green. Yeah. Chrisida Green. Chrisida C. Green, MBA. Get it right. MBA. He already graduated because April 28th has passed. That's right, girl. Congratulations. Congratulations, sis. sis. All right. The next email comes uh from Daniela, she says, good morning, Kia and Jade. Hope you both are well. I'll be walking in May 2018 with a master of science degree in biomedical informatics. Oh, yes, I will be a black woman in informatics. Thank you both for acknowledging all graduates who have worked excruciating. Yes, the words succinctly describes how painful getting a degree can be. Hard mm -hmm. to finish. Um, excruci excruciatingly hard to finish school and get a diploma or diplomas. It's time to make these keyboards clap. Team type of hey. fast. Hashtag team type of fast. Hashtag team for the culture with love. Hey. Daniela. Congratulations to you, Daniela. Congratulations, Daniela. Hey, cousins, blessings to you both. My crew wrote in last year to congratulate a friend on getting her master's, and y'all referenced us as the Golden Girl. Shout out to hey. Tanya hey. from Fam You. Go ahead, do it. Fam You. Fam You. <laughs> well, I'm now I'm right. Right. if I'm not, please forgive me. I'm <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry. I'm, I'm, no. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Well, now I'm writing to congratulate my younger twin sisters, Diva and Kara, on their graduation from our alma mater, the illustrious Florida A&M University on All May right. 4th. The twins will be earning their bachelor degree, their bachelor's degrees in accounting from the School of Business and Industry and will start grad school in the fall. They have worked very hard to balance work, school and marching with the 100 we are all so proud and congratulations to all the graduates, especially from fam. Goddamn you. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Donique. Yes. Congratulations, Congrats. twins, Diva and Kara. Totally. And thank you, Donique, for writing in. Indeed. Hey, y'all. First, I have to say I love your podcast. It gets me through the tough days, and I feel like I learned so much from you both. I didn't know we could send in December graduations until I listened to the episode today, so I wanted to send mine. I received my Doctor of Education degree in December, insert praise dance here, from yes. Morgan State University, focusing on community college leadership. I'm so glad that dissertation is done. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. At 27, I am the youngest graduate in the history of the program, and I can't wait to see what's next for me. Keep being amazing and serving up like girl magic. Tamara, congratulations to you, Dr. Dr. Diaz. Come on, get your life. Come on, Dr. Diaz. Mm -hmm. Tamara, no Tia. Jade and Kia, I love this show so much and look forward to every Tuesday. Keep up the amazing work, and I can't wait to see where you all go. Thank you. Natalie Chenault will be graduating from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville with a BS in Communication Public Relations. She will be moving to St. Louis to work at an advertising agency. Wait, oh, Natalie sent this. Okay. Yeah. Well, that yeah. is wonderful. Congratulations, <laughs> Natalie. Yes, indeed. Uh, Jada Klein sent us an email. Jada Klein graduated from the University of Wisconsin Madison in December of 2017. And not only did she graduate, but she was selected to be the first black female student commencement speaker for the graduation. She um, shared uh, links to her speech, uh, which was awesome, by the way, um, and spoke a lot about, you know, what her background is and how she got her degree for her family, for her ancestors and how everyone should be proud of her. And we totally are. So yes. congratulations to you, Jada. Uh, for not only being, um, you know, a graduate, but for but for being selected to represent the class of 2017, and like you did, you did an awesome job. Congrats, sis. And we will actually put the link for your um, for your speech in the description box. Sure, we so will. So if you guys want to check it out, 
You guys absolutely can. Do that. Okay, dear Jane and Kia, I love your podcast. I've been listening since episode one. Dr. Kia has been such an inspiration to me to Aww. continue reaching for my aspirations. Jade gets me together on a regular basis. Yes. <laughs> this past Sunday, the 29th, I graduated from Oderbein University yeah. with a Bachelor of Science of Nursing degree with distinction. Mm -hmm. I received distinction status due to my work surrounding increasing cultural competence and championship in the classroom. Important I presented work. research. Yes, it is. I presented research and evidence that has been implemented in order to provide continued assessment of cultural competence um, on campus, as well as resources to recruit and develop faculty that will be better able to educate nurses so they can care for undeserved communities. Underdeserved communities. Thank you for your awesome show. And I included some photo uh, underserved. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> there goes those red eyes. Thank you for your awesome show. And I included some photos below. The first two are from graduation with my mentor and a close friend. The third is from the defense of my research. Thank you. And congratulations, Jed. I think it's Jediah. 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 Jediah Maitland. Yes. Hopefully we didn't pronounce that wrong, but congratulations Please. to you. Yes. And feel free to correct us. Yes, all the awesome work that you're doing. Amazing. Hey, Jane and Kia, my name is Chanel. I appreciate your podcast more than I'd ever be able to explain. Kia, your talks about higher education have helped in motivating me to get back in gear and get my master's. I got swallowed up by the workforce after, grad, after undergrad and my year off had turned into almost three, but I'll get there. My graduation announcement is for my girl, Jasmine Stevens. She's graduating with her MSW from Howard University on May 9th. I've been by her side through her entire stint, and I know it wasn't an easy accomplishment, but she made it, and I'll forever be proud of her for the balance she found to get through it. She inspires me to get back in school, and I'm so extremely proud of her, and I know she'll accomplish every goal she set for herself. Thanks, guys. Um, shout out to you, Chanel, and congratulations, Jasmine. Absolutely. Good afternoon, Jaden Kia. <laughs> Y'all crack me up. Okay. Good afternoon. I am Krishaya Dixon, a newer listener to your show. Hey. I will be graduating on May 12, 2018. I've attached my information below. Krishaya Dixon, graduating <laughs> from Illinois State University with a master's in recreation administration. Love it. Thank you for shouting Love out my accomplishments. Best, Krishaya. Woo! Congratulations, Krishaya. You better do it. That's it. Uh, hi, Jaden Kia. My name is Amanda Nicole. My middle name is Nicole. It's like the best middle name ever. Um, and I'm a part oh of the goodness. inaugural first listeners of the Getting Grown podcast. <laughs> Come on. I remember last year when you guys were giving shout outs and I felt so down because I wasn't able to be a part of the shout outs. I've been working overtime, full time job um, with the city of with, with New York City and uh, with the city in New York City and a full time uh, in school full time for the for the moment. I want to thank you, Kia, for being so vulnerable about your PhD process and to Jay for being such an amazing support with all the encouragement shared. I am graduating with my Bachelor of Arts in Community and Human Services from SUNY Empire State on June 7th. Woo! I made it. Hashtag teen typing fast. Sincerely, Amanda. Congratulations to you, Amanda. You did it, sis. You got your shout out. Yeah, and we are on our last one. Good afternoon, ladies. I hope all is well. You better come yeah. through with the with the courtesies. Yeah. I want to share that I successfully defended my dissertation today with distinction. Come on. My dissertation title, Prostate Cancer, Infographics and African American Survivors wow. of Prostate Cancer. Oh, my God. Please share with your listeners. We absolutely will. He's included. This is from Sh uh, Dr. <laughs> Sean J. Upshaw. Very nice. Um, and he included some pictures. We have a handsome black man here <laughs> with a very healthy beard <laughs> and a mean and nasty ass suit game. Come on. You better do it. This tie and this shirt combination <laughs> is sickening. <laughs> you are giving Dr. me Dr. Show is not playing with you hoes. He's not playing with you hoes today, uh -huh. okay? Very, very, very. Oh, <laughs> very, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for keeping us in the know. Well, now that we're yes. here, congratulations to you for successfully dis defending today um, and with distinction. So shout out to you, uh, Dr. Yes. Uh, congratulations. And that concludes our graduation announcements for today. If you want to be down for next week, send your emails. Treat, please try to be as brief as possible 
um, and, <laughs> and as you write them, understanding that we will probably be reading several at a time and we don't want to make the segment an hour in and of itself. But we will include timestamps just like we did last year for those of us who for those who may not want to be a part of the graduation <laughs> announcement, still in all, we think that, uh, still in all, I, I am committed to reading each one that we receive because I think it's important. Yeah. We don't celebrate graduations like we should. Um, so we will always celebrate them here on Getting Grown. All right? But we will include the time stamp. We will. The it's fine. We love, we love you. We love we you. It. Sometimes, you, sometimes you just don't want to hear. It. I get it. Sometimes, sometimes you just, you just don't, don't feel like, feel like it. it. Yeah, that's fair. You know what sometimes I'm saying? Sometimes you want to watch commercials. You sometimes know? you don't. That's your you choice. That's your choice. It's fine. No. But yeah, that's it. Finding the time to get a lab test is nigh impossible. And don't even get us started on the cost or just trying to figure out what your results even mean. But now it's easy to order the test you want with our friends from EverlyWell.com. Everlywell is an at-home health testing company that offers a variety of tests from food sensitivity, which measures your sensitivity to 96 different foods that may be causing discomfort to metabolism, to an at-home STD test. That's right. You can test for STDs all from the privacy of your own home. Each test is physician-reviewed, private, simple, and processed through a certified lab. All you've got to do is head to everlywell.com, choose your tests, and they'll be shipped directly to your doorstep. Once you collect your sample and send it back to Everly Well Certified Lab Partner, you'll get your doctor-reviewed, easy-to-read results online in days. Everly Well is so convenient. No more sitting in waiting rooms, no more mystery bill, and no more waiting on your results. Head to everlywell.com and use promo code GROWN to take 15% off your first order. That's everlywell.com, promo code G-R-O-W-N for 15% off your first order. Take control of your health today with Everly Wells at home health tests, your test on your time and on your terms. All right. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, chicken and biscuits. Let's gather <laughs> around the kitchen table for kitchen table talk. Uh, today, we're actually going to be talking about uh, a few, well, it's a, a little while ago. We did a, what about your friends episode on, about friends and friendships. We're going to do a part two of that uh, because we need to talk about friends and friendships specific, specifically, um, regarding like breaking up amongst friends, like yep. getting broken up with whether or not that's, you know, like do friendships formally in, like, do they break up? Like, can you break up with your friend? Like you would break up with a, with a romantic partner. Um, and you can, and you can, and we're going to talk all about that. Uh, we got an email. We're going to fuse kitchen table talk with honesty box. Cause we got a, a question about toxic friendships. Um, and we thought that it would serve as good framing for our broader conversation about friends, friends and friendships and breaking up with friends. So I'm going to read that, read that email. Now I'm going to, you know, stay with me. There's a lot of layers to this. We tried mm-hmm. to find a way to uh, abbreviate it, but it's just so much here. We just want to dig into it together at the kitchen table. So get your snacks and get ready because we're about to go on an adventure. She she says she don't even care if she hears this. I was checking to see if she wanted to be anonymous. <laughs> she was like, I don't even care if she hears this. That's how irked I am. Girl. Um, go off with your bad stuff. So, um... She says uh, she's been listening to the show faithfully since March. Um, one day in particular, she was driving to a conference, listened to us for four hours straight, and it felt like she Ooh. spent the day with her cousins. Um, <laughs> so, hey, cuz. All right. Ooh, what up, prima? So uh, now to the purpose of the email. She writes, I have a person in my life, don't even know what to call her at this point, who has some very concerning behaviors. I'm currently a full-time graduate student with a graduate assistantship and internship and a part-time job at Starbucks. Needless to say, I'm busy. So she and I became friends in 2013 when we were both in college and every year since there has been a point where she's decided to end the friendship because I wasn't being the friend that she wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. Then she starts speaking to me again as if nothing ever happened. Last year, she ended the friendship because I didn't go to a cookout. And instead of her coming back to me, I humbled myself, reached out to her to tell her that I was hurt by her decision to end the friendship. Because at that point, I truly considered her a friend and didn't think it should end over something so small. However, after 
we decided to remain friends. I promised myself that if she ever did that again, I would not be her friend again. I'm 24 and I believe it is absolutely ridiculous for us as adults to have annual friendship breakdowns. When I was 19 to 22 (laughs) and in college, it was different because I didn't really consider her a dear or close friend. Mm -hmm. I felt like our friendship was based on proximity. So when she ended it, I wasn't really phased. And when she came back, it was whatever. Since I've been in graduate school, she's still an undergrad because she's taken a few semesters off. Our friendship has grown to something that seemed more sustainable. And I actually thought that we may be lifelong friends. A few days ago, I text her and asked her to bring her positive energy to our small group that night because I was feeling sad about relocating for work. She responded and I didn't... uh, because I was at work, she texted me later on saying, I hate texting you. And I said, okay. And she flipped out. <laughs> so it has been at least since February that she has consistently vocalized how much she doesn't like when I don't answer the phone or when I don't text back immediately. When I call her back instead of FaceTiming her back, when I can only talk for 20 to 30 minutes or when I hang up the phone, when I get home to my family. So by April, I have learned to ignore her smart comments, her attitude and other passive aggressive behaviors. So when she texted me, I really did not care. And I showed her that basically the conversation blew up. She went on social media and posted a subliminal saying circle getting smaller and smaller every day with all these emojis. Um, And she said, since I promised myself that when she ended the friendship again, I was done. I text her to clarify and confirm that she was referring to me in her Insta and Snap stories. I had asked I had to ask her this direct question three times before she answered. And part of her response is included below. Take it how you want. I will tell you just like I have before when I don't want to be cool anymore. I'm just stepping away from you since I'm so toxic. I don't want to burden you. End quote. There was, she said, she said pages and pages of other nonsense, but this specific part is what I'm grappling with. How in the world are you as my friend going to say, I'll tell you just like I have before when I don't want to be cool with you anymore. That solidified that she's not the type of friend I want. If you feel like it's appropriate to approach our friendship as something transient, yet you want me to pour into you and give you the attention of a husband, something is wrong. She's really annoying. And I'm writing to you because (laughs) y'all always keep it real. And I want to know if I'm tripping. This is literally the fifth or sixth time that we've had this conversation or argument And it always results in us not speaking. I've come to the conclusion that we cannot be friends. I am not at a place in my adult life to make her or any other friend my number one priority. I refuse to talk to her 25-8, not 24-7, but 25-8. And that's what she's looking for. She thinks that means that I have poor communication skills that I need to fess up and fix. And I have tried to tell her that. With all I have going on, I do not prioritize talking to her all day, every day, because I don't base the worth of my friendships on whether or not I talk to you every day. So, yes, Mm -hmm. I want to know if I'm wrong for not wanting to be her friend anymore. Am I wrong for not being available to her 25 hours, eight days a week? What say ye? Sorry, that was so long. (laughs) Best. Lorray. Lorray says I don't even care if she hears hears this. this. That's how irked I am. Woo! That is so much, so much right. petty, so much petty, so much petty. Like so, for no reason. Oh my god! But um, I wanted to talk about this in particular because I was having a conversation with some friends last weekend about whether or not it's appropriate as adults to formally end relationships, um, you know, or break up with your friends. Um, one of my friends was talking about a friendship that she had with someone who she was really close to at one point in her life. But as they grew and developed, she realized that, you know, or she, I don't know, she saw that they were growing in different directions and just didn't have common interests. And she just wasn't interested in investing, spending time with her anymore. And it wasn't that she no longer liked the girl or that it was, you know, the girl had done something offensive or anything like that. It was just like they no longer lived in the same place. Um, and the time that it took for them to, you know, hang out, spend time, all of that. She just wasn't, you know, given all the things, other things that were going on in her life, dealing with other challenges and transitions, you know, uh, getting 
engaged and dealing with family issues of her parents. Like there was just uh, lots of other stress and she didn't have the time or energy to invest in the relationship. So she chose not to. And it was, uh, we had a, a lengthy discussion around the table around whether or not, you know, it, it, it should be a, a formal discussion. Like this relationship is no longer serving me anymore. Or should she just continue to kind of like fall back the way that she has? So I wanted to talk about breakups amongst friends because um, it definitely happens. And what does it mean? So I don't know if we should start. Should we address LeRae's issue and then talk about it or talk about like use LeRae's issue as a case study or a case like I mean a point like what would you yeah, do let's, let's use her, let's lose, use Lorraine as a case study all right so what do you say in this case in this case though this is just like a bad situation I don't feel I feel it like really they're at, I feel like Lorraine and her friend are just at the point where they don't even like each other anymore so yeah what's and the I think point? that Lorraine is actually pretty valid um in in her irritation uh, cause it sounds like this friend is just a flaky, um, flaky human being. Like they just, cause if anybody's. Or just the relationship is just one sided. It's just not mutually beneficial. And that's the thing, right? Well, the thing is if the girl is like so pressed for her to be contacting her all the time and she's talking about her communication skills and so forth and so on. But then she turns around and says super, like stupidly passive things like, uh, take it how you want. Or I, I'll let you know when I don't want to be cool no more. It's like, okay, wait a second. First of all, who are you? <laughs> First of all. So that's why I'm like, this girl doesn't seem too balanced. Because on one hand, it's not normal for you to want to talk to your friend all day, every day, if you are a true living adult. So I think that that's, that's a valid point. But I think that it's also fair to say that a lot of relationships, you know, that transition from like undergrad to, you know, post-grad, like post-undergrad, whatever you do, whether it be grad school or going to work or what have you. Because I feel like in college, for some of us who were in college and lived on campus and had a circle of friends that we literally lived with, ate right. with, uh, all of that, like we were a group of a group of people. We spent a lot of time together talking all day and half the night. You know, that was the dynamic. Yeah, that was the dynamic of our relationship. And it served our lives, you know, that way. So Lorray graduated and moved on to graduate school. This girl took some, some, some time off and is still an undergrad. So I think that it's fair to say that, that their lives are in different yeah. places. So the friendship that they once had when they were in undergrad, you know, the nature of that friendship has got to change because the nature of their relationship has changed, like their lives have changed. So I think that, I don't know. I think that the issue is Lorraine's friend took it personal right. um, and made it about, you know, her or about something different when it was just like, you know, she's not here. She cannot be, I cannot talk to her every day all the time. Like we once did. And I agree with you there, but then on the other side of things. So like, let's take my life, for example, I I'm the mm -hmm. one, only one of us who has a kid. You know what I'm saying? True. I'm the only one of us who's married and who has a kid out of our friend group. And mm -hmm. that changed my life. I mean, it didn't change my life dramatically from before getting married because of, I had a kid and we were living together already. So that was the, you know, you guys knew me in that dynamic, but at the same time, it still changes things, you know, as your kids get older. Absolutely. However, my friends are, they're understanding, you know, if there's something I can't come to, or I got something else going on, nobody's sitting up here going, Oh, well, Jay, you know what I'm saying? She's shady. She don't cut like she, she, she not coming or whatever. They're like, oh, no, she has a family like she got she got something else to do. So it is what it is. So I feel like there needs to be even in the in the changing of dynamics, there needs to be a level of understanding. Absolutely. In a friendship. And this sounds like an irrational. Like you said, she took it personally. And I know that happens sometimes. We had somebody write in about that before, about how they were taking a relationship personal on their end, on their friends, you know, with their friend's communication and their friend ended up having a family and all of that and being pregnant. But anyway, I got <laughs> off onto a tangent. 
So is it is it is it appropriate to break up with your friend? Like, do you feel like that's worthwhile? Do you feel like it is something that um, is helpful? Like, is there a utility in breaking up with a friend um, in this case or in any case? I think it's I think it's circumstantial. I say mm-hmm. that because I feel like like you said. I know it's so cliche, but the reasons, the seasons, and the lifetime. Sometimes people come in your in your life for a little bit, you know, and you have a moment in time, and then it's kind of one of those things where you guys kind of fade from each other, and you remember them later on down the line. Like, whatever happened to that person? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, in situations like that, I don't think it's necessary to have a conversation when things just start like naturally and organically separating or fading. But I think in a situation where um, you have somebody who you have considered a friend and they have had uh, extremely toxic behavior. It gets to a point where you're like, listen, I can't deal with you no more, but I still want you to be a good person at some point in your life. I think that's when the conversations are necessary um, for you to quote unquote, break up with your friend so that you can try to hip them to some game and whether or not they'll listen is none of your business. But mm-hmm. so you can try to hip them so that maybe hopefully at some point in their life, they become a good person. <laughs> so, I mean, I think I, I think I um I think I I agree to a certain extent. I feel like there is I don't know. I think there are occasions when that conversation can be useful and productive. Right. And I think that there are occasions when it won't be. So Oh, of course. It's it's like okay, you're not going to listen to me when I tell you, so I'm just going to show you. Um, and in which case, you know, my fallback game is me. Oh, okay, nasty. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I guess I, I I agree that like we said before, I don't remember what episode or whatever, but we said I think it's 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 not good. It's hasty. It's I don't know. I don't think it's fair to reach conclusions about relationships or friendships by yourself. Mm -hmm. So I've always felt ways when people have had, when they've made decisions about the nature of our relationship or where we are in our friendship and didn't include me. That being said, I feel like if the opportunity presents itself for there to be a conversation where we can get some understanding about how each other is feeling, and we can make a decision based on that understanding about how the relationship will proceed or progress, Mm -hmm. then, you know, I'm all for the breakup, right? right? If we can sit down and come together and mutually decide that this relationship is not serving us the way that we thought it would, and it may be best to end it, then I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. But if, if one party, I'm not even going to, because I mean, it may even be me. If one party is not willing to come to the table and have a productive conversation about it, I am all for just, you know, taking some steps back and just seeing how things play out because things may play out differently. Right. What I have learned in my life is that my, like my life goes through the cycles and in, 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 in of life, ebbs and flows, peaks and valleys, highs and lows, all that. As I traverse those different phases, how I engage with people change. And that's just the bottom line. So there were times when I was talking to Jade every day on the phone. Yeah. Just about every day. Yeah. There were times when I, we were, you know, checking in on Gchat and doing all that. But, you know, when things got really super crunk at work and the way that my day was set up, it was just not conducive for me to, you know, it just didn't make sense. I couldn't get much done. Um, I couldn't. And it wasn't because I didn't like talking to Jade or I didn't have anything to say or anything like that. It was just because my day wasn't set up that way. Now, Jade and I never had to have a conversation like, oh, you, you and your feelings, you mad or that. No, because that was never the case. And when we did speak, it was just like we were speaking every day. So there was no there was no, you know, misunderstanding about the nature of our friendship and where we were. Never. Um, Me and Kia literally used to FaceTime every day. Right. And at that time, I did not have two podcasts. I did not have seven jobs. I had like three, but I didn't have seven. You know what I'm saying? She was writing her papers and writing her, her, her dissertation. 
and and it you know and that's just what it was at the time but when it changed that didn't mean our relationship changed or that we needed to yeah go to do about it right so i mean that's just a fact of life and i think that that comes with adulting that perspective comes with being an adult because neither one of us got in our feelings about it. but i know that you know everyone everybody reaches those realizations at different points so you will have people who feel away about the nature of your engagement changing with them. Not even like the friendship, but just the ways that you engage and hang out and kick it with them. Or if they see you engaging and hanging out with kicking, kicking it with other groups and you don't talk to them like they may take that personally. All of that is fair. But I just feel like we should always be able to come to the, to the table and have a conversation about it that, you know, is not. Uh, accusatory like don't come at me like you what's going on like I'm doing something wrong yeah. before you you know don't come at me like and I've had that before. you finna get together yeah and I've had that before too like and I'm never, don't come I'm at never me like you finna get to that favor exactly <laughs> I'm not gonna respond to that well at all because, <laughs> because I'm not nah. if you feel a way you can ask me about it and see where I'm at yeah. with it but you don't call me on some what is up with you and xyz nah. And, and I'm blindsided, blindsided yeah. by the fact that you even feel away because that's not going to work well for me. So story time. OK, I won't go into full detail because I'm not trying. I'm not going to put this girl out there like that. But I had a situation like that where I had somebody who was a good friend of mine and she was not happy about uh, a, a, not an interaction, about a transaction, I guess we'll say for mm-hmm. the lack of a better phrase with you know another person and so you know what i'm saying now this is a person that she would interact with on a normal basis uh this is somebody she still had some form of a relationship with but when they did some business for me she was upset that i did not come and tell her about it ahead of time now the thing about it is that I hit her up, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, what's up? Like, you know, we had our normal hangouts. So I was like, yeah, you want to get together in this day? Cool. Made arrangements, got over there to hang out. And I brought it up to her. I said, oh, I saw such and such the other day. They, they, you know, did a service for me. Yeah, about that. I've been wanting hmm. to talk to you about that. I'm like, oh, word? Because you didn't mention that in any of these text messages where we made plans to hang out today. Um, but cool, if you have something you clearly have something on your mind that you need to release so go ahead and she proceeded to you know I guess try to read me and let me know that I was not a transparent friend problem number one I brought this up to you you didn't have to bring this up to me that looks like transparency to me but anyway you know she she brought that up to me and and I let her speak her piece and then I I politely disagreed with her let her know like uh, I never would want to hurt your feelings as a friend, um, but I don't agree with your take on this situation. Not your not not your feelings. Your feelings are valid, but I don't agree with where you're coming from with this. And this is how I'm looking at it. And at the end of the conversation, you know, it seemed like we agreed to disagree and move forward. And that's not what happened. Uh, she continued to be in her feelings and carry that forward. And that then translated through how she communicated with me. And then that's when I finally washed my hands of the situation. Like I'm not running behind nobody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you got a problem, we already had a conversation, but if you have a real problem and you can't sit down and talk to me about it, like an adult, then I don't need to be in this friendship. I don't need to, I don't need this. And that doesn't mean that my love for you is lost. I don't wish any ill will on you, but we've been friends for too many years at this point for you to start acting like that. Mm. And if you don't have any value for our friendship enough to open your mouth, like a fucking adult and come and talk to me and have a conversation outside of the conversation that we are. Cause if we have a conversation and I think something is done, then it's done. You know what I'm saying? I have conversations to dead shit. Like I don't have conversations to keep having more conversations about it. So if I think some shit is solved and, 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 and we move on about our lives and you keep acting funny, I'm not getting ready to entertain that. I'm too grown and have too many things to do. So, yeah. No lies told. So, uh, Lorraine, so I think to the point that Jade and I both made, I think that 
it's clear that you're just in a place where this this conversa- this uh, friendship is not going to serve you going forward, mm-hmm. right? And I don't think, to your question, direct question, I don't think that it's bad for you to not want to be this girl's friend anymore because I feel like you guys have had enough exchanges, negative exchanges about the nature of your relationship and this whole back and forth thing about I'm going to let you know all that other stuff. That's a waste mm-hmm. of time. I don't think that you're not you're wrong for not being wanting to be her friend anymore. I don't think that you're wrong for not being available to her, to her standards of how available you should be. And I don't think you have to answer to that. Like, you know, you don't, you don't have to explain why it's just like, I'm not, that's just not the way my life is set up right now. And if you feel, if you feel like having a conversation with her, um, to this effect would be productive, then have it. Um, or if you feel like this is just the end of the road and the conversation is not going to be productive moving forward, then just, you know, go space killer. That's it. And I, I think that that's the case <laughs> in a lot of friendships because I know that, that we have all dealt with this in some form or fashion. It, you assess the friendship and what it has meant to you. And sometimes it's not healthy for you to move forward, but at the same time, it still might be necessary to have dialogue before you, you, you take your peace or take your leave. But then there are other situations like he has said, where it's like, I can show you better than I can tell you because you've already told somebody mm-hmm. something a number of times in a conversation is not necessary. And there's a really good article that we will post in the description box, um, which is from Buzzfeed. Here's how to break up with a friend, <laughs> like a damn adult. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll be sure to post that in the description box. And it's just got some um, some little pointers that help you, you know, that talks about identifying a toxic friendship and then deciding which route is best. But it's got some 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 decent points in it, of course, in, in a very BuzzFeed fashion. So uh, we'll, we'll be sure to post that in the description box. Now, I have a question for you. OK, to kind of round the conversation out, All right. because there are times when we have toxic relationships yeah. and we need to end those. And we've talked about whether whether or not you need to have conversations about it. But have you ever had somebody break up with you? As a friend, I think that in the cases where I, my friendships have ended, it has been mutual. Right. With the fade, the fade to black has happened on both sides. But no, I can't say that no one's confronted me or reached out to me to let me know that I'm ending this friendship for X, Y, Z, or I feel like, you know, we're at a point of no return. So we're just going to fall back from one another, thankfully, because I don't know how I would respond to something like that. I don't know. Have you? As an adult, no. Uh, like formally, <laughs> the la- I, and I might have already told this story, so um, feel free to let me know if I have. When I was young, like 13 or some shit, I had a homegirl who really liked this dude. And I was I was real cool with him. So she always wanted me to like relay these messages. But so I would, but he just wasn't interested. And I didn't mm. want to come out and be like, yo, he's just not that into you. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I didn't want to do that because that'll hurt. So, and I'm 13. I don't know. I don't know how to handle anything. <laughs> My prefrontal cortex was not developed for like a smooth oh, no. like 13 years after that. So, <laughs> so I um so I lied. You know what I'm saying? I lied to her profusely and and would like relay these wonderful sweet messages. <laughs> and then I finally came clean and I was like, uh yeah, I don't he didn't say any of that. I just was trying to spare your feelings. And she hated me from like then to now. So <laughs> I think that was the the one time that I can oh really God. recall somebody being like, ah, I cannot fucking stand you. And I had to, I'm mad but <laughs> so let's take that and translate that to an adult, like being an adult. I think in a situation like that and somebody breaking up with you, obviously, hopefully we would never do that as adults, but I would hope that in a situation similar to that or whatever, that, we take those moments when people break up with us um, to assess kind of who we are and maybe yeah. configure some things and how to yes. with some of our strengths and our weaknesses are. 
Yeah, that's an awesome opportunity to kind of do some self-work yeah. and thinking about. So like one of the things that I've been working on is trying to get perspective through all of the crappy things that happen in my life. Right. So it's not just like, you know, feeling and being present in the emotions of it. Like, you know, this is terrible. I've lost a friend or this friendship is different now or it's just, you know, whatever. Um, and there, and there have been times when there, you know, that does suck because, you know, it does. Right. right? So, um, but instead of just being mad all by myself and just in here and being mad, I think it's trying to find a lesson in it. Okay. So what, what about making it less about the other person and more about right. me? Has my behavior changed? Could I have been a better friend to them? How can I take this, uh, with me into other relationships um, and improve the way that I, you know, the kind of friend that I am mm -hmm. such that this doesn't happen again. Is there a pattern here? Is this the fruit of another, of another area in my life? Right. You know, am I mad about this and it's manifesting over here? Like all of that, I think is a part of owning, you know, and taking responsibility for, cause I mean, it happens, right? right? We're just not, we're flawed people. So there are times that we can go about things you know, in, in crappy ways that may inadvertently or sometimes intentionally hurt people. Right. Or trigger people. Yeah. That's an awesome point. In healing and in, in grieving and trying to understand the, uh, the loss of a friendship or a friendship changing in nature, a way to kind of cope with that is to try to find the positives yeah. of it because nothing is wasted, right? So like even the the awful things in our lives serve some sort of purpose. So trying to find what that purpose is. Mm -hmm. The same as you would in a romantic breakup. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what have you learned about yourself? How does this, how does this get you closer to what your purpose is, what your goals are, what the things that you've set out for yourself, all that makes a difference. Um, and I think that that's valuable in navigating the spaces where the, the your relationships change in nature from being popping and this is my homie and we talk all the time um, and we're so close to, I'm not really sure what's going on between me and this person or, you know, this person feels this way about me and I don't know why or what I did or anything like that. So I think this, these are real, real things that come with being an adult as you change, as your priorities change, as your capacity changes uh, the way that you interact with the people you you're close with in your life is going to change. And there are some friendships that can stand that test, those tests and trials and ups and downs. And then there are some relationships that don't. Yep. And well, there's another article that I found or uh, which says how to deal and heal when a friend breaks up with you. So we'll also post that in the description box so we can kind of you know, take this conversation as we continue to have this conversation. We can look at it from both sides. You know, there are times in which you have toxic relationships and you have to end those relationships. But then there are times when somebody ends a friendship with you and there are ways in which you have to heal and deal from those because they can be just as hard, if not harder than romantic breakups like we just mentioned. So we Ooh, hope I just had a thought. Yes. Oh, what's that? Mm -hmm. I remember when, now there will be times, this might be in a conversation that we continue on maybe in a part three, because I know we're getting long here. <laughs> but um, I was thinking there have been times where I have chosen to um, change the nature of a friendship that I had because I did not like who I became mm -hmm. with that person. Mm. So there are people... You know what I'm saying? Because I felt like we came together in conditions that were not healthy. Mm -hmm. Oh, like we came to, we came together. We became friends during a time in my life where my thinking was not where it needed to Ooh, be. I definitely my self -esteem, had one of those. Yeah. My self-esteem was lower. I allow, I tolerated things that I shouldn't have tolerated. I didn't have awareness that I, that I should have had at that time or needed to have at that time. Um, or, you know, maybe that I didn't even know that whether or not I need, I just was a different person. I hadn't grown and matured. Um, and then sometimes when I got the light bulb, when I got that perspective, when I have got this awakening and like, oh, it don't have to be this way. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have to, I don't have to tolerate this or, you know, what <laughs> I mean? or th those kinds of things. 
when I had, when you have that kind of come to Jesus Mm -hmm. and you know, how you exist within a relationship changes and the person who you used to let do, you know, anything and say anything and you just go along with it. And now you start to speak up and, you know, they can't handle that (laughs) or, you know, I don't like, you know, I have, I have had a relationship where I did not like who I became, who I like, you know, who I was with that person when we came together was not the kid I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And times when I would try to hang out with them again, after I changed, I would find myself reverting back to the old kid that I didn't want to be no Mm -hmm. more. So I had to find ways to kind of disengage from that. And it wasn't like, I'm trying to find the word that I'm looking for. (laughs) I almost want to look this up to make sure that I'm saying it right. Oh, it was. I'm a little smart. It wasn't incendiary, right? Oh. So I wasn't I wasn't yeah. trying. I wasn't intentionally trying to be like, uh, like I don't like these people no more. It wasn't even about them or that him or her. I don't wanna when I say them, it's one person, but I don't wanna. Of course. Yeah. So it wasn't about that person. It was me. Um so it was almost like I had to have that conversation, that Chrisette Michelle conversation, like blame it on me. <laughs> Say it's my fault. It's totally me. You are just the person that you were when we met. And that's amazing. And you're being true to yourself and that's consistent. But I don't like who Kia is when I'm with you anymore. And sometimes that is very necessary. Yeah, man. We've all had it. Yeah. We have all been young and stupid. So we have all (laughs) engaged with people that we didn't have no business being friends with and allowed them to shift who we are, even if for a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good and broad conversation that we should. Yeah, we might need to revisit. For sure. We should revisit. We will definitely delve more into that at another time. I know we said we were going to start with the book club this week, but obviously we have already had a very long episode. So <laughs> we will start getting into that next week. <laughs> Indeed. Prepare your hearts and minds. Send us questions. If you have questions about an American marriage, we have been getting a lot of uh, tweets about people who've read the book and how their edges are blown back and they can't wait to talk about it. So let us know what about the book, the story, yes. the characters you want us to talk about. And delve into, and we'll try to frame out a conversation that we all can dig our dig our heels in, and kind of sit around the kitchen table and have good chat about. Because I, there's so much to unpack in this in this book. Yeah, and uh, we will I'm be excited, doing the giveaway. Though. I have the books from the Sisters oh, Are All Right to so for the giveaway. So we will uh, again send us a tweet if you want that if you want to be a part of that. Um, and we will make yes. sure that, that you're included and we can make that happen. But yeah, Les, I think we can wrap up because we had like a fuse kitchen table talk and honesty box. So we'll close out with petty keys and that'll be yes. all, folks. And I want to be very responsible of the things I say to my sister because everybody know I can be real petty. P-E to the T-T-Y, honey. We are rounding out our episode with the petty peeves. It is time to put your petty on the Petty, 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 petty. Yes. A piece. Come on. Go quiet, Storm. Um, uh-huh. I'm going to do a listener petty peeve this week. Do it, do it, do it. Do you satisfy? Whatever it is. Dear Jade and Kia, mm-hmm. first things first, praise the Lord, niggas and niggettes. Yes. Uh-huh. Jade and Kia, I love your work and what you do, what you two are doing for our culture. Your show gives me so much life. I'm way overdue for this petty peeve because there are no breaks in adulting as much as I wish there were. I can't believe mm, we didn't say that. this sooner, but here it goes. My petty mm-hmm. peeve is to express my anguish and disgust. For old, okay. overgrown, foul, no manners having, inconsiderate ass women who do not wash their hands in public bathrooms. Ooh, I'm my almost God. convinced they walk around with mud butt. There's a lady on my floor at work who has consistently used the bathroom without washing her hands and with no shame, sis. When it's time to wash hands, she proceeds to motion for the motion censored water faucet, but her hands are grabbing for paper towels before the water could hit the sink bowl. Jesus! <laughs> The more run-ins I've had with this lady, the dirtier she looks to me. You know how you can look at someone and they just look dingy? That is her. 
We recently held a hot dog sale in our office suite and she came by. Knowing this lady's history with her hands in soap and water, I'm grateful we had the setup to where the customers did not put their hands on anything but the bag chips and canned soda. Do not invite this bitch to a potluck. Bottom line, it is your prerogative if you choose to wash your hands or not, but it becomes offensive excuse me, to me when your grimy ass phalanges touch the same door handle as me when leaving the bathroom. The triflinity has to end 20 seconds. That's all it takes. Signed, Cousin Sabrina. Triflinity. So this personally resonated with me because I remember when I was in college and I was interning at a law firm and it was a very large law firm and there was a very tall um woman who was in the bathroom with me we came out of the stall at the same time I went to wash my hands and she walked towards the door and I was an intern but I turned to her and I said miss you forgot to wash your hands (laughs) and she (laughs) looked like she wanted to murder me with her eyes and then she walked back and she washed her hands so then I go back to my (laughs) <laughs> I knew it. I was, and I was sweet with it too. I was like, miss, you forgot to wash your hands. And I went back to my assignment. Well, she walks into my department later on and I see her go whisper to my boss and then she walks away. And so he calls me over. He said, do you know who that is? I said, no, I don't know. He was like, uh, she's one of like the, one of the partners. <laughs> I said, um, well, what's oh she telling you? He said, she said you were out of line. I said, no, I wasn't. I said, she was getting ready to walk out the bathroom without washing her hands. He said, wait a second. (laughs) That's literally all that happened. I said, I literally just told her she forgot to wash her hands. And he hollered. I mean, hooped. (laughs) He He was like, carry on. Go back to whatever you were doing. (laughs) This is a white man. This is a white man and a white woman. And he just laughed. He just laughed at it. He was like, and then he then he proceeded to let me know later on that everybody hates her and she was a bitch. But uh, he cracked up in that moment because he thought that I did something that like, could jeopardize uh, my job. Like that was something that was like out of line. He was like, that's uh, that's all that happened. I said, I literally told her she forgot to wash her hands in the bathroom. I said, that's gross. <laughs> and he was like, I'm not even mad. Go ahead. <laughs> So this personally resonated with me because I think, you know how I feel about the bathroom. I don't touch door handles. I don't believe in none of that. But people who don't wash their hand are another level of nasty. What's your peeve? I also am going to read a peeve that we received on Twitter. This peeve comes from EJ Lee Esquire. She said, I believe I found my petty peeve for getting grown pot. Um, I actually have two because I just saw another one in the stream that hit me in my stomach. What is the point of wearing headphones if you're just going to subject everybody in the tight space to your solo karaoke session? That sounds like (laughs) nails on a chalkboard. I wanted to slap the bad rap out of her mouth. So this is, you know, there was a young man on the Metro the other day who was listening to, I don't even know if it was his song or somebody else's song, but he was rapping. Like he was like out loud, like performing, but like practicing. And it was everybody in the Metro, everyone in the car was like, we have worked all day. (laughs) We we can assure you that we don't want to hear this. So I can totally relate. I'm not interested in your coon tune, sir. Like I don't care. Okay. I don't care. Um, yeah, so the next girl, uh, the next one comes from, uh, at snacking and hanging. (laughs) (laughs) She says, I absolutely hate walking behind someone while they're on their phone. Lil bruh, if you can't walk and scroll or text or whatever at at a reasonable speed, then just stand to the side until you're done. Oh oh my God. (laughs) Oh, do you, do you live inside of my brain? Like bruh, that was a word. What is her that name? Snacking and wonderful. What is it? Snacking and hanging. <laughs> snacking and hanging. Listen, we are kindred spirits because mm-hmm. I literally, I'm Larry David. I, like when I'm walking <laughs> through the streets, if somebody is on their phone and walking and they cannot do so simultaneously, I'm like, off the phone. <laughs> off the phone. You, you can't walk in sex. Get off the phone. <laughs> and I just keep walking. Why are you? 
you're policing. You making citizens arrest out here. I'm like, you don't go to walk in the street because you, you don't always, deserve. <laughs> you always, always reprimanding somebody. I sure am. I know. It's hilarious. I'm such a grandma. But yeah, man, those are the petty peas for today. And that is another episode of Getting Grown. Thank you guys for listening, for tuning in. We're going to have that merch info for you soon um, so that you guys can take part oh, yeah, in, man. Totally. Uh, in our Praise the Lord nigga shirts with the little hands that I absolutely love. <laughs> I wore mine to choir rehearsal on Sunday. And it was with just it. so... Most of the people, everyone loved it. Everyone was like, I just, yes, yes, can I have one? <laughs> but it wasn't it was like I was running errands after that. And it was just so crazy to watch the white people Delicious. double take. They was like, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> and I would just be like, correct. Yes. I mean, I, yes. I can't, I haven't worn it yet because I've been waiting for like the really proper, you know me. Oh so gosh. I've been waiting for the real proper environment in which to do so. Um, but I do religiously wear my Jaden Kia shirt and my Jaden Kia hat. So we will have, we're, we'll post some pictures online for those who have not been able to see the merch. And then we'll be sure to get some information to you guys soon so that we can all take part. Uh, in the meantime and in between time, mind your business. Moisturize your skin and drink your water. Why sis? Because your black will crack if it's ashy and dry. Ashy and dry. Arid. Flaky. Oh, Bye. Later. Finding the time to get a lab test is almost impossible, but now it's easy to order the test you want at everlywell.com. Everlywell is an at-home health testing company that offers a variety of physician-reviewed private tests from food sensitivity to metabolism to thyroid. No more sitting in waiting rooms or waiting on your results. Head to everlywell.com and use promo code GROWN to take 15% off your first order. Everlywell, your test on your time and on your terms.